uh, 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 people to understand, of the parliamentarians actually, to understand that uh, this process is critical in order for us to be able to even engage on the matter that they wanted us to engage on. Oh, which is a serious matter and as government which we take seriously and I did indicate that government is seized with it. But uh, in order for us to be able to engage with that, the BRRR reports that the EFF was referring to are intended to be able to allow parliament to be able to engage with the medium term budget policy statement in, because this also informs our budgeting going forward. And in terms of our legislation, we are supposed to table this MTBPS uh, uh, in good time before, prior to the tabling of the, of, the, of the budget in February. In fact, it stipulates that it must be done uh, uh, six months prior to, to that. Okay, so you, you did then table it. Uh, it was delayed because the EFF asked for that motion or wanted it to be delayed. Absolutely. You did table the, uh, Could you hear the, the um, stun grenades outside? Did, did you fear for your own safety at any uh, point? There was a little lockdown afterwards. You said you were told to stay in your offices. Just, just tell me how it played out. Well, I, I, I did had, um, hear the bank. And um, at that time, I did not know what it was. Uh, you know, uh, I did. Uh, I was uh, concerned not only for for my own safety, but for everyone's safety, mm. because when there is violence, everyone is um, actually subjected uh, to that uh, untenable situation. We've been in these situations in the past. We know what uh, would be the result of uh, these uh, situations when they escalate. Mm. But uh, I felt I um, had a job to do. And uh, it is critical that I do table this medium term budget policy statement and the adjustments estimate and the Division of Revenue Amendment Bill because it serves to address the challenges that the country is confronted with, with the issue of um, uh, higher um, education financing being one of them. We therefore cannot um, proceed uh, doing the work that would uh, address the, uh, the uh, challenges that the country is seized with. How does it feel to, to be finance minister? You, you've obviously the, seen the protests going on. Uh, there's a lot of sympathy for that cause, for, for education, uh, especially Absolutely. university education. Yes. But you are looking at all these conflicting causes. Uh, revenue coming in, uh, reduced. You, you did um, uh, mm -hmm. confirm that today. But there are all these conflicting interests uh, in requiring money. How does that feel? Especially at this time when uh, we have such serious fiscal constraints, it is a difficult uh, task of finding the right balance and also being able to allocate resources according to the priorities. And uh, of course, there will not be a single area uh, that would be uh, funded uh, adequately when the resources are tight. It is for that reason that we're saying this matter needs to be addressed in a, 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 in a manner that first looks at stabilizing the situation um, in the immediate term, but looking at the long-term solution. Because and government is already seized with looking at the long-term solution of financing. You will um, recall that we already have troubled uh, the national student assistance um, uh, scheme in the past five years. Already 50 billion rands has already been allocated, but this is the time when the need also continues to grow because we are enrolling more students. But um, we need to look at the efficiencies also with regards to the matter and bring in all the stakeholders also. Remember that um, the issue of education is a matter that we require as a country in order to build the skills, in order to be able to build, uh, to grow the economy. And uh, the taxpayers out there would want to see their resources deployed where it is going to get the best return, both economically and socially. The students that are protesting are protesting on behalf of their parents who are bearing the brunt of paying higher fees. But um, there also is an element which we should not also shy away from. There's an element of playing politics with the situation because we are now exploiting a genuine uh, uh, a crisis of students. But there are some people who actually have found it convenient to play politics in trying to, to use this as, as an area where all resources should be deployed. You will hear that uh, failure just to understand how budget, the budgeting process works when um, one member uh, stands up and says, 
we must take all the money that is being rolled over from the departments. But if you look at the rollovers, we're talking 1.7 billion rands. Part of, of, of uh, those rollovers are funds that were actually withheld from municipalities which are supposed to be released to them mm -hmm. this year. So it's, it's that narrow-minded political posturing that wants to begin to politicize a very critical um, area where that is government we need to focus on. I understand what you're saying because before you started speaking, um, there were primary school children walking around yes. uh, Parliament and, mm. and that is a dire need as well and maybe they Absolutely. can't protest and, and mm. raise their, mm. their voices. Yes. Can we talk about the overall allocations therefore because we always say the lion's share goes to education, education yes. uh, and we're spending a lot of education, a lot of mm. concern that that's not being spent well enough. Um, apparently some countries spend much more. Is government because of because of the fact that we're not seeing change, are we re-looking at all the allocations and, and how much uh, sway do you have in that process? Look, we're actually working with the Department of uh, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation located in the Presidency to do a, a, the whole expenditure review um, uh, um, so that we are able to see whether we are getting value for money in, in the, our entire expenditure. It's a process that we have embarked on over, um, over the past three years now, but we're taking it even deeper in order to be able to come back to government so that evidence informs where the resources actually go. We now have uh, also introduced the socio-economic impact assessments that looks at even our policy direction that whenever we pass legislation regulations, they also should be looked at in the manner that begins to look at what would be the outcome and what would be the unintended consequences. But indeed, we are seized with the matter and we work with um, various departments. We've worked with education. I was just saying um, one of the announcements and um, the, uh, uh, what, what is contained in the report is that with education, we've actually been able to reduce the cost of uh, the purchase of learner um, and teacher support material um, in order to be able to get value for money uh, through a process where we have now said with the little resources that we have we can actually buy more books but we're also working with the department to make sure that those books are also focusing in the key areas of building um, a basic education so yeah. it is true that we are spending more money on education than most of the developing countries and the intention mm -hmm. is actually now to improve the outcomes and the uh, and, um, and, 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 uh, uh, throughput. And, and a whole lot of people crying out for, for more funding. Yes. Uh, we're running out of time, but I think part of the problem here is that people uh, believe that sometimes money is being spent recklessly uh, on the wrong things. Your, your predecessor, uh, Pravin Gordon, basically cut up the credit cards. Apparently there was uh, some pushback. Is there space for you to cut fat, um, to, to look at the size of the executive, uh, to look at ways where we can save money, where it's not being spent efficiently? There always will be. And um, that is uh, for that reason that I also was just giving a report that since then, uh, during my predecessor's time, we introduced these um, uh, cost containment measures. We now can report that we have actually been able to see some savings. In uh, one area, we actually reported 47% on just catering and, uh, and events in, in, in departments. We've seen a huge reduction. We've seen um, a reduction in travel uh, subsistence and, um, and other um, expenditure areas where we think we can reduce goods and services. It's not everything that we purchase that we require, but we also need to close the part where we, we have leakages in government as a result of corruption. And these are all the areas that we've taken the lead in, um, in, in, in closing them up. Our procurement reforms that are in place now seek to address precisely that because we're saying with our um, uh, procurement reforms it's now most of it is automated and most of it actually can be supervised and overseen in real time to be able to see where we are spending money and if we realize with the, the upcoming also national price referencing system and standard, standardizing of some of the procurement of goods and services that are routine uh, purchases we are better able to control that. Minister, can I ask you in finality and very quickly, will we see a wealth tax? Well, as, as I said, the um, judge, uh, Judge Davis, in his uh, tax committee, had also in, uh, uh, looked at all forms of taxes, including wealth tax. And we have asked him to pay particular attention to it because there is this debate out there. And um, we would want an informed uh, decision on any tax that might be introduced in future. In future. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Finance Minister Ntlantla Nene. And we are going to return uh, to his speech.